Welcome to the Chase Benefice Online. Today we celebrate the feast of the Epiphany. Christmas is behind us and now most of us will be contemplating the task of taking down our festive decorations. But Epiphany is above all a season that invites us into a deeper understanding of the meaning of Christmas. For Christ coming into the world. So, like the Magi, we'll, we kneel before him, offer him our gifts and pay him homage as our Lord and King, resolving to follow where he leads by the prompting of his Spirit. And so as our service begins, we say together the prayer of preparation. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known and from whom no secrets are hidden, Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear now the words of this week's Collect. O Holy Father, who gave guidance to the wise men until they bowed in worship before our Saviour, Lead us to an awareness of your presence and to bow in adoration before Christ our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. Sarah is going to read this week's Gospel. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for it has been written by the prophet, And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler, who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men, and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word, so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star, and they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then, opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts, gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. During the First Gulf War, a school teacher in Glasgow told her pupils that she would be organising a prayer session for peace. Attendance at this prayer session would be voluntary since it would be taking place during the morning break. As most of her pupils were Muslim rather than Christian, the teacher expected only a handful of children to come to pray. In fact, nearly the whole class turned up. But what was really striking was that all the Muslim children came carrying rosaries and asking if they could say the rosary for peace, complete with the Hail Marys. Even though there's a big difference between Christianity and Islam, Muslims hold Jesus and Mary in high regard. And on this occasion, what drew the two groups of children together in prayer was the desire for peace. We must surely believe that our God, the God of peace, accepted the prayers for peace from both the Muslim and Christian children alike. And what drew the non-Jewish Magi to Bethlehem was the desire to worship the Prince of Peace. These wise men coming 
to offer their gifts to the baby have now become part of the modern commercialised Christmas. We've all probably received cards with pictures of three men on camels making their way to a stable led by a glittering star. Or we've seen local children with crowns on their heads telling the old story. It's easy for us to assume that beyond making Christmas more Christmassy, the visit of these Magi has no significance for us now. But we'd be wrong, for it has a great significance. In journeying to Jesus and to giving the gifts to him, those three Magi are conveying right now good news from God to you and to me. Firstly, in their journeying, those Magi were not of the same religion or nationality as Jesus, and yet they came. They were not Jews, they were foreigners. They represented the whole pagan world, the Gentile world outside Israel. So they journeyed to Christ on behalf of us all, and that is good news for you and for me, for it means that God, the Father of Jesus, is the God of all nations. Secondly, those pagan foreigners offered gifts which were valuable in their eyes according to their culture. And these gifts were accepted. And that's good news for us all. It's a sign that God accepts whatever people have to offer. That is, from the heart. The Magi didn't have to forsake their own religions or nationalities before giving their gifts to Christ. Epiphany, then, doesn't have to be seen as a celebration of the world's conversion to Christianity. For God is God of all, and will accept what we all have to offer. Prayers for peace, for example, from Christian and Muslim alike. The account of the Magi tells us that God in Christ doesn't mind where people have journeyed from, and he accepts whatever gifts they offer him. He is the God of all nations of the world. Christ came to prove that, that fact to men and women of all races and creeds. And the remarkable thing is that he began proclaiming that fact from when he was a baby, with humble shepherds, people from the lowest rungs of the Jewish social ladder, came to visit him. And then when these wealthy foreigners came journeying, Jesus couldn't wait to prove that God has no favourites, no special people who are particularly acceptable. Later on, he would die for the sins of the whole world, the way, the truth and the life for all people. So there can be no place in our hearts for racial prejudice or for contempt towards people of different religious faith. When we come journeying to God, we offer him our gifts. We should come as ourselves. We shouldn't come as a Christian or a Jew or from a particular country or background. In terms of our standing with God, our race, our achievements, our social standing, our bank account, none of these mean anything at all. This is tremendously good news. As Paul says in Colossians, in Christ there is no Greek, no Jew, no circumcised or uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave or free. But Christ is all and is in all. And the Magi, foreigners who journeyed from a distant lands to give the baby Jesus their gifts, has brought us this good news again today.
Penny is now going to lead us in prayer. Let us pray. Living God, we thank you for all those who brought the good news of Jesus to us and all who nourish our faith today. We pray that the whole people of God may work in unity and openness for the coming of God's kingdom. Lord God, we offer you ourselves. We thank you that salvation is for all people and pray for a just and accepting world where none is rejected, despised or treated with contempt. Lord God, we offer you ourselves. We thank you for our families and our communities. We pray that our homes and churches may always be welcoming and generous hearted. Lord God, we offer you ourselves. We thank you for all who care for those who are vulnerable or sick, and especially for the very young. May they know your healing and wholeness, peace of mind and hope. Lord God, we offer you ourselves. We thank you for all who have reached the end of their earthly journey, that they may be welcomed into your eternity. Help us to use the time left to us here as good stewards of your gifts. Lord God, we offer you ourselves. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And so we pray the prayer that Jesus himself taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And so now we come to the peace. When they saw the infant Christ, the Magi were filled with joy and peace. As we too gaze upon Christ, let us open ourselves to receive his peace deep within us. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you and Happy New Year. Peace be with you, Prosit Nayar, Bodog Uyevat Kivanok, Bon Ane, and Harry Yamwaka Mpia. Thank you for joining us for this service today. As always, there'll be another online service next Sunday. Details will be on the bulletin and also on our website. And for those who are able to join us in person, there'll be services in Chadlington at 8 a.m. and Ascot at 10 a.m. And so now we end with a blessing. May you find in the Christ child the mystery of God's plan of salvation. May you be open to the promptings of the Spirit in your life. May you share this mystery revealed to the Magi with all in your midst. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. <laughs>